My name is Pete Kunze. In 2018, I earned my PhD in radio, television, and film, specifically media studies. Uh, and I am currently working at Tulane University, where I am a visiting assistant professor of communications, teaching classes in film and television studies. Well, I mean, my parents were um, not college educated, were working class. My father was a mail carrier, my mom was a secretary. Um, and for me, the opportunities available to me were contingent upon what I saw in my everyday life. And I never really kind of came to terms with that until years later. I had, uh, when I was in college, my advisor had said, you should apply to an Ivy League school. And I, I laughed at him and said, why would I spend the same amount a year in tuition that I plan to make every year when I get out of school. And so I went to a local university because that seemed doable, it seemed affordable, it seemed within the realm of possibilities, I had seen others do it. And, um, and it was at university where I was encouraged to consider academia as an undergrad because I was a bit of a, a gadfly in class. Um, and I was not afraid to have unpopular opinions and I was not afraid to debate and argue. Um, and that's really the lifeblood of academia is engagement and debate and challenging one another in productive ways. Um, and then one time I was teaching a film called Seven Up, which is a 30 minute documentary about children in England. And there's a scene in the film where they're interviewing wealthy children and they're interviewing children who have been orphaned. And the interviewer asks the children, where do they want to go to university? And the wealthy kids say either Oxford or Cambridge. And the children who are living in a care home say, what's a university? And for me, that really kind of struck home, right? When you are not around that kind of culture, you don't see a place for yourself in it. And I realized that the extent to which my ambitions and dreams have been articulated was contingent upon the life I had led so far. So in many ways, if I had known I was gonna be a professor, I should have started my path much differently than I had. And a lot of what I've done later in my career was kind of smoothing over some of those missteps I had made. Um, and there's a lot of hidden curriculum to academia. There's a lot of learning things that no one's gonna tell you explicitly. They're just gonna expect you to know. Um, and I think that's much harder for first generation college students because um, we often come from a very different environment. We do not have exposure to this kind of order, regimentation, respectability politics, and navigating that uh, is tough. And it often requires one to listen and not talk, and to observe and not act. Um, and that's a hard lesson to learn, but when one does, it becomes easier to later speak and act in ways that are effective and meaningful. The first tip I have is that the way you understand networking is probably wrong. Uh, I think there's a way that we approach networking in academia, particularly as graduate students, where we want to know the people who have big names. We want to know the associate professors and the full professors in the field who've written the important book, who've written the important article, who are shaping the conversation. We want them to know us, we want them to be impressed by us, we want them to write letters of recommendation for us. And what you will very quickly learn if you pursue networking in that way is that many people feel that way about networking and those individuals are very often resistant to what they see as opportunists or people who are taking advantage of their time. Um, and sometimes those people are just not very nice people. So I think that instead of thinking of networking as in who can I connect with, who can help me, it's much more helpful to think about citizenship. Right? How can you participate in the community of scholars? How can you build relationships with people who are of your generation, who are equally coming up? How can you collaborate? How can you create opportunities for one another? How can you build a meaningful relationship and not just a connection? Um, and I feel like that serves us much better, right? Um, the individuals who I made friends with at conferences because we had shared interests and not because I felt they could help my career have coincidentally been the folks who have helped my career much more than the associate and full professors who have names 
who I wanted to associate with myself. Um, it's just the nature of the beast to think that if we associate with those who have, who have succeeded, that we ourselves will succeed. Um, and very rarely are those folks going to help out the little guy. Um, so I would say seek opportunities for meaningful connections and relationships among your peers rather than opportunistically seeking them out from those who you think can help you because those folks rarely will. I think the reality is that there always are going to need teachers. And one of the problems that students have, particularly coming out of R1 institutions, is that they were being prepared to be R1 professors. And many of us will never have that opportunity. There are not enough jobs for everyone coming out of an R1 school to go into an R1 position. And for many of us, we don't want that life, right? I had a varsity blues moment there. Um, there are opportunities to teach in private schools, in charter schools, in community colleges, in comprehensive institutions, in um, our two institutions that are just as rewarding, just as meaningful, just as exciting as the opportunities we might think are waiting for us in our one institutions. Um, so, and there's also opportunities that exist beyond the classroom, right? In administration, in nonprofit work. Um, I think the important skill to remember is that although your PhD was preparing you for a position as a professor, that you have developed a set of skills that are incredibly valuable in other areas and industries. And while you may not necessarily gain the position you want right away, um, at a certain point, it's important to realize your wealth, your wealth, your worth as an employee and as a professional and to take those skills where you can use them effectively and meaningfully. So I got my position at Tulane very last minute. Um, and a friend of mine said, well, why don't you just take a part-time position? And I'm in a, a medical position. <laughs> I have a health condition that makes that not really realistic. Uh, and also I can do other things than teach. Um, and I think that that was something that I was kind of thinking through, right? Is how could I apply this work into instructional design, into mentoring, into um, curricular design for nonprofits. Um, I think that in some ways it was exciting to think about what my life could be like during this period of time in which I could apply these skills into other places. I think it is true that leaving academia can make it harder to get back in, but ironically I also think that there are ways in which we can take our skills into the nonprofit sector, even the business world, and make ourselves more exciting job candidates when we come back, right? Because the emphasis on public humanities, the emphasis on industry experience, depending on your career path or your academic desire, um, those can really enhance for you. So I think the important thing to realize is that your self-worth has to come from something else other than the job you hold. It has to be the work you do and realizing that you can do that work in a variety of contexts and institutions and spaces.